Hey folks, we're right at Christmas. Got your hat on. Uh, hello, hello. Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet, where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Hey, I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. And it's Christmas time here in oh. Hall's headquarters. Hey folks, I'm Greg. This is Sheila, as some know her as Mom Hoss and me as Hoss. We are a gardening company right here in South Georgia if it's the first time joining us. And we do a weekly garden show on Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. So. We try to keep it the topic relevant to what you'd be doing in your garden this week or this time of year. Mm -hmm. um, if you like it, be sure to subscribe set that notification so you can yep. join us every week. We do other videos too, but the Row by Row is always on Thursday night, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So what we do is we help you grow your own food. And Mama Hoss does a little bit of canning and things like that as well. But the meat of what we do is helping you grow your own food. So Christmas, another Christmas rolls around. Another Christmas is here before you know it. Boom, boom. You got yep. my present? I do have your present. Really? Mm -hmm. I do. I bought it. Un unlike me, I bought it about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. yep. Is it something that we'll both use? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's something that we so I bought it with me in mind. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> yes. So anyway. <laughs> Folks, we're talking about cold, hardy vegetables today because it's pretty much cold everywhere everybody's at. Mm -hmm. And wintertime gardening can be fun as we'll show you what some of the things we got going on. It can be extremely fulfilling and giving, I guess is the best word. Uh, it's different for us than, than summertime garden. A lot of people love the summertime garden. It's a lot easier to me. It is, but it's just different because we grow different stuff. It rains more. There's a lot less pests. Slower pace. Slower pace. Slower pace. So with wintertime garden, when something gets ready, if you don't need it in the next couple of days, it'll hold for a week or so, and that's fine. In the summertime, when that corn's ready and the tomatoes ready, you got to get them. So mm -hmm. it is different. I, I still enjoy, I enjoy gardening in wintertime. Collard greens. We had collard greens the other night that was knock your socks off. Mm -hmm. We've had cabbage. Mm -hmm. We had um, kohlrabi tops. Mm -hmm. It's the season for the greens. Yep. So we're going to do a drawing for the for the old Grinch or for the, what do you yeah. call this? Yeah, so I mentioned several months ago that at the end of the year, we would do a grand draw, grand prize drawing. So I went back to all the shows. We started doing the old goat. It was the middle of February of this year. And so I went back and I used this random generator prize winner that we have on um, YouTube. So I picked a person that commented for every show back to that one in February and they're in this little thing. And so the grand prize, you wanna show them what we're drawing for? Well, this may be your grand prize. <laughs> so we're now at another drawing at the end yeah. of the show where I'm going to give away a wheel hook because we're in the Christmas spirit. Mm -hmm. So this is what you're giving away? You want to talk about it? Yeah. So this is a new product for us coming out in 2023. It's the Survival Seed Collection here. So Zach Stivers, if y'all know Stivers Homestead, said he visited with us not too long ago, or him and his family did. And he said, Greg, y'all got to do one of these right here for people that want to put up seeds and save them. And you know, we got to think about, it. we do have these nice full bags that we can store seeds in forever. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things seal up and they will last a long, long time. They keep moisture from going in and out. So was, well, that's a wonderful idea. So we came up with a list of 40 plus varieties of open pollinated seed. For you that may not know, that means all seeds in this pack here are seeds that you can save the seed from, from year to year. So if it hits the fan, and you have your... Yep. Food source here. Right here. And of course, they're non gm Real quick. Okay, real quick. I'm going to go with what's in there, okay? Because there's a bunch of them in there, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I'm going to go real quick. Green crop, bush bean, Fort Hook lime bean, Detroit dark red beets, Waltham 29 broccoli. We got a Brussels sprout in there. We got a, a cabbage in there. We got honey rock cantaloupe in there. Kudora. Carrot, show yeah. what that looks like. That's mm. right there. Bates College, which is uh -huh. a great college there. 
trucker's favorite white field corn, Stoll's evergreen field corn, which is an open pollinated one, national pecan cucumber, lemon cucumber, black beauty eggplant, roselle hibiscus, oh. black old sunflower, calendrum prince mix, which is more of a medicinal herb, lemon basil, garlic chives, oregano, another kale, lacinato, which is one of my favorites, purple Vienna Karabi, and we got Paris Island romaine lettuce. Man, and it keeps getting better and better. Oh, we got some things now I didn't know. We got a couple herbs. We got three herbs in there, medicinal herbs, which is we got lemon drop, and we'll talk about that in the coming up shows. Good for the toothache. Chamomile, am I saying that right? Uh -huh. And mullen, 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 Florida broadleaf mustard, uh, okra, Clemson spotless okra. Parade bunch of onion, white acre field peas, green air peas, cow wonder bell pepper, Tabasco pepper, Seminole pumpkin, French radish, French breakfast radish. I'm giving out a win oh. here. Spinach, Bloomdale spinach, Table King acorn squash, early crook neck summer squash, South Anna butternut winter squash, heritage gold tobacco, Abe Lincoln, tomato, red robin, cherry, we got there. Yeah. We'll have, probably have to, take, yeah. And then Amish paste, Roma tomato, and then purple top, turnip, Georgia, rattlesnake, watermelon. And there you have it, folks. So, that is a bunch. So all those are in here. And by the time this air sh this show airs, it, you should be able to order this. If not, it'll be after January 1st. So again. And the, let me tell you, the retail value on that right there is over 100. I got it written down here somewhere. Over a hundred, retail value, if you bought those individually, it's $181.56, and that sells for $99.99, and that's with free shipping. Okay. So who is going to be the so lucky, lucky, lucky winner? The lucky winner, the grand prize drawing. And it would be Randy Zarpinski. Zarpinski. So Pinsky, I think he won one of the drawings before. Well, yeah, of course he did, yeah. yeah. So Randy. Randy, you are the lucky winner of all these seeds. So send us in your shipping address. We may already have it. And we will get this sent out to you. Yep. Okay. And at the end of the show, folks, we're drawing for a wheel hoe. So you we're stay not drawing. Confused. They've got a comment. Well, they got a comment. Yeah, we do, we're giving away a wheel hoe. How about that? Giving away a yeah. wheel hoe. All right, so we're going to dig into cold. Oh, wait, 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 I can show you. Well, we can, but we're just going to dig into cold hardy. These are cold hardy. We're going to talk about cold hardy things in the garden. And you go ahead because you all jumped up. Well, about, I can wait. I can wait. Yep. All right, so as we get into them, let me get back to my thing here. That's Christmas got me all messed up. All right. So, cold tolerant plants, keep in mind, if you don't know what your first frost date and your average cold temperature is, you can look that information up on USDA um, website. Very important to know to see what plants you can plant. Yep. Uh, variables with, with cold weather can be wind. Wind can be really, really tough. Mm -hmm. Humidity can another be another tough one there. Uh, what else? Mom soil boss. moisture. Yep, soil moisture. This is one thing most people don't really understand, but if you're going to get cold, cold weather and you're worried about your plants, the number one you want, thing you want to do is make sure that there's enough moisture in the soil and that plant is not stressing from any moisture. Mm -hmm. um, mulching can help. Mm -hmm. and Especially strawberries. Row covers. Did you... Mm, I didn't bring one. We got row covers, folks. We have a new item. Is it live? Should yep, be. Yep, yep, it's live. So we got two different sizes of row covers. Go check them out. In fact, we may... We'll if, throw up a picture here. Yeah, we got row covers now. This was going to help dramatically for you guys cold gardening out there. So when I was looking at this stuff, and, and I knew this, but I didn't really put it all together. What actually causes the damage when we have these hard frosts? Glad you asked, Mama Hoss. So this goes way back in the day, and I just had this conversation 
a couple of days with some people that stopped by here. In 1983, it's the coldest winter I can ever remember in my life. And that was 1983. That was a good year. That was the year I graduated high school. It got down in the single digits here. I can remember that morning. It seems like it was eight degrees. Wow. What happened was a lot of the plants got killed by this cold weather here because it just was either... We've not had that cold weather in a long, long time. And it splits the bark on a lot of your trees and a lot of your ornamental shrubs. Ah. The cells expand inside of that. When they get wet. When they get wet and they freeze. They expand just like water does in a, a, a water pipe. And it busts that bark. And or when the you cells see, explode. When you see that bark split on that plant, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So the same thing with the leaves and the cells split. That's what causes that old mm -hmm. wilted right. down look. Right. So talking about mulching, strawberry plants are one of the most important things to mulch. Now you can also mulch your onions if they get real cold. Those are the two things that come to mind that would need some, that can mulch saves the best. And that, one thing I have done before is my ash potatoes. If I've got a cold, cold, spell coming in and they just coming out of the ground i would mulch over those with some pine yeah. straw or something other to protect those right and another thing is keep the soil moist because it, you'll have less damage because it's harder for the freeze to yep. get yeah that that's really important is that okay so let's talk about we we're going to talk about plants that can survive what is the list of things that just will not survive oh man tomatoes cucumber squash summer squash winter squash any of those summertime squashes like i mean squashes any of those summertime vegetables that we normally grow okra, okra peppers any of those, boom eggplant yep. beans mm -hmm. basil yeah any kind of frost whatsoever will get those most of the time All boom right. boom boom so, what's the difference in a light frost and a hard frost? Do you know the temperatures there? No, not exactly, but I would say a hard frost is what, below 30? 30? 32. Below 32? I would have thought 30. A light frost, from the resource I looked at, is 34 to 32. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. But it really, the damage to the vegetables actually come when it's below freezing for a longer period of time. So when you get those light frost, or maybe you even get a light hard frost, <laughs> those actually make some vegetables taste better. So yeah, it's your collards it and your turnips and mushrooms. And, and your carrots. Like carrots, yep. Yeah. So let's talk about those that are most resistant to a hard frost. And some of them are more resistant in different stages of their plant. An example of that is English peas. Mm -hmm. So English peas are very susceptible to cold weather when susceptible. they susceptible. When they they're prone to they're prone to damage when they first come out of the ground. Right. And and overall, most plants, the size of the plants at the time it freezes, is going to depend. If you've got one that's been out there a month or so and it's got a good root system and it's big, it's going to withstand it better than if you just transplanted something. Or something's just emerging from the soil. Right. Winter peas or, or English peas to me is the ones I've lost probably the most. I plant them late and they just come up and you get that whole freeze and it'll zap them. And you have some more, a couple rows over that have come up and got fairly established and they're fine. Mm -hmm. So one of the most resistant or cold tolerant is carrots. Yes, people grow carrots all the way up north. We talked to Ryan and he lives in Canada a couple of weeks ago and he talked about how they grew carrots up there. Carrots is one of these things that's pretty universal. Everybody can grow there in the wintertime. So these were planted back toward the middle of September in my raised bed. And this is yellow bunch and this is Cadella, Cadella. Corrodo? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> and look at these. I'm just so happy. I really didn't think they would be this big yet, but uh, I went to pull some for the show today, and we can start eating on these. Yep, I think so, too. Yep, I did a good job teaching you to grow carrots. <laughs> so the tops of the carrots is more susceptible to the mm -hmm. damage than the roots. So if you're going to have low, low temperatures for a long period of time, you can mulch on these um, tops. You want to give them a taste? Yeah. Now, ain't this a pretty one right here, this yellow one? I, I scrubbed spray? it good. You really oh, don't have to you? peel it. 
Why does she That's start? why it's shiny. I used our potato and carrot brush. Oh, did you? Mm hmm. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Mm. What variety did you say this was again? Yellow bunch. Yellow bunch. Mmm, it's so sweet. Yep. There it is. And then try that one. Let's taste the difference. This one really could have been harvested a little bit earlier. Why you say that? I think it's a little big. Yeah. Different taste. It's a different taste. I believe the yellow one's sweeter. Mm hmm. Okay, next vegetable is garlic, and it can take below zero. Yeah, folks grow garlic all up north and far. That's our downfall of growing garlic. We don't have enough cold Enough weather. cold yeah. hours. Garlic loves cold weather. Beets. Beets love cold weather. Here's some beets I got. Oh, puny there. Well, they just, they're not fully matured yet, Mama Hoss. Mm. But I brought these to show this right here. This is Merlin beet, which is one of my favorites here. You go ahead and start eating the leaves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, these are coming along. I thinned this one out. Those were planted a little too thick there. But uh, these leaves right here are wonderful mm -hmm. right here. Folks ain't never had beet leaves. You saute them just like you would any other green. So here's my beet. You gonna compare? Mm. Well, mine's, it, mine was planted after yours. You yeah. think so? Yeah, I know. I was. don't think so. Yeah. So this is um, Touchtone Gold, the yellow, which I really like. Mm-hmm. You want to cut into that? Oh, I can't. We're just snacking away here, ain't we? So beets can take down to 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. um, chard, too. Oh, yeah. Swiss chard can take it down low, low, low. Mm. You like raw beets? Mm-hmm. I don't normally don't like raw beets. No, that one's good. Show them how pretty that yellow is. Yeah, that is good. That's good about raw. <laughs> it is. For a beet, and I normally don't eat beets raw. That's good. Brussels sprouts can go down to zero. They like the cold weather. Yep, they do. Collards, it depends on the variety, but they are some that can go down to zero. Vates, if my memory serves me right, is one of the most cold holler, yes. tolerant varieties out there. Actually, collards, of all the brassicas, is most resistant. Mm -hmm. to cold weather. It has the least amount of moisture in the leaf. Another one that would carry, excuse me, Mars heading. Mm -hmm. It's great that. for zones 3 through 12. Mm -hmm. It can take the heat and the cold. Right, it's a good one. Probably not my favorite, but it's a good one. I don't think we've ever grown that. I have years ago. Um, spinach down to 20 degrees. Yeah, spinach is one of those that take it. Speaking of spinach, this right here is a new variety that I'm trialing out that we're going to have on the website for long. And if you notice on our website, we only have baby spinach on our website. Mm -hmm. This is a large leaf Italian variety oh. called Imperial Beach that we're trialing and it's past the grade. We're real excited about it. So we're going to add this to our seed lineup for next year. I got a good row of these right here. I guess that is leaf, that ready to pick? It is. That's ready right there. It's a full leaf Italian variety, Italian type, excuse me. Mm. It's not as good as the carrots. No. Yeah, spinach though. loves cold weather. Make some good spinach dip. Let's talk about cabbage. Cabbage can take it down to probably, uh, I've seen cabbage make it down to in the low 20s before, if you get below 20, cabbage with the actual head will split on those. Yeah, that's on my next list, but yeah. you can jump ahead. Yeah, I think it's Leeks, parsnips, kale can go down to 20, uh, 10 degrees. Um, the two varieties that's really cold tolerant, Red Russian and La Sonata. Mm -hmm. Kohlrabi down to 15, chives down to zero, and then your English peas. If they're a good size, they'll do well yeah. with the hard frost. You thought what you say in what you say, low twenties? I'd say probably twenty five is gonna be a limit on English mm -hmm. peas. Yep. So now to the moderate cold and frost tolerance. So these would be less tolerant. 
You want to hit that list? Broccoli cauliflower, which we all love to grow. They're going to get a little spongy. Uh, Except if your heads have started forming and it's going to freeze, you either need to cover them or go ahead and gather them. Mm -hmm. I got some more broccoli ready in my garden, by the way. I just seen a few moments mm. ago. Cabbage, 25 degrees. I, you know, I, they, 25 is what we're saying here. Probably, and that's real close. I'm going to say 22, 23. The but that can does. be dependent upon the humidity and the wind and all that. And how long it stays cold. Mm -hmm. That makes another big difference. Lettuce. Certain varieties of lettuce do good, and then certain varieties will burn. Some of the romains, I would say, is probably the, some of the colder type varieties. Of I lettuce. read that if, if the frost gets on the lettuce, it's best don't touch it. Just let it oh, naturally so. thaw out on its own, and sometimes it'll do fine. Of course, our mustard, turnips, and mm -hmm. cilantro, and things like that, we love to grow. Rutabagas, we'll get, They'll radishes. get burnt back in the low 20s. Even us fava beans can take some frost. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. You know, one thing we don't talk about much is cover crops. Mm -hmm. What about cold tolerance on cover crops? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask these people a question, so I'm sure some of you what is the most cold tolerant cover crop that we sell? Rye. Mm -hmm. Rye will make it down to anywhere from 20 to 30 degrees below. Now, it's not gonna do much growing there, but it will survive in minus temperatures, which is 30 kind of, below? kind of amazing, yeah. Wow. It will survive. It's not going to grow or germinate or come up, but it will survive. Frosted clover, which is one we've got, frosty preserved clover, down to 20 degrees below. A lot of your clovers are very uh, cold tolerant. Hairy vetch, down to below zero. And then Australia. Uh, below 15. Yeah. Hairy vetch. Yeah, minus zero. Same thing. Okay. <laughs> That's big uh, Australian winter peas will take it down real, real cold. And daikon radishes, mm -hmm. which I got some coming up around, will take it below zero as well. So, you got those cover crops out there. If you can get them up and get them established well, they're very cold tolerant, as we mentioned there. Yeah. So, let us, if we miss something, um, let us know what zone you're in and what plants you have that will survive your winter. Mm hmm All right. So, we got Garden Spotlight for the week, folks. And we got... Carrie Kelchner in Zone 4 at a Cassville, Wisconsin. Now, don't you look at that. This is the picture for Summer Garden, which we're all dreaming about Summer Gardening again. Beans, peas, onions, carrots, and broccoli. Damn, what a nice Should looking I say garden. Shall corn, yep. I think. So you can tell this is right next to her house, and they, live, they may live in town or... So you can garden anywhere. All you need is a little bitty spot right next to your house here, and you can grow your own food, just like Carrie and them's doing right there. In Zone 4. Yep, Zone 4. Potatoes, we got potatoes on pre-order. Ash potatoes is on our website. You can go there and order them. Make sure that you get some set back for you and then we'll start shipping in the middle of January and we will get potatoes to you before you need to plant them. How about that? Yeah, a link will be in the description below where mm -hmm. you can go and place those orders. Mm -hmm. And folks, the last minute Christmas gifts, and we are at the last minute here, you can always order a gift certificate. Boom, boom. Let's throw up that on the screen right there. Give people the link there and you can give them a house gift certificate. The gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. Then they can order whatever they want. And they can grow their own food. Right. All right. So here's the big giveaway. Are we ready? We're going to give away a single wheel hook here. Ooh. Ooh. What do you have to do to win this? Well, we're going to do a drawing. But all you've got to do, and this is pretty simple, in the comments below, Put the number of tomatoes that you grow in the spring, the number of tomato plants you grow in the spring. Tomato plants. We would love to know what you grow, how many tomatoes you grow. And we can do this by you giving us this information here. You don't have to put 25 tomatoes. You don't have to put, all you got to put is number. If it's 25, put 25. And if it's 100, put 100. If it's three, put three. Now, if you'd like to put in what kind you've grown, that'll be fine Yeah, it'd be too. fine, but we're going to look at the numbers. All you got to do to qualify for the drawing is put a number of there of the tomatoes that you grow, and we will do a drawing to give away a single wheel hoe. Mm, ain't that nice? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, folks. Thank you. We got anything else covered? We caught the corny joke. Oh, corny joke. Let me see if I can remember one. Where does the Grinch, what bank does the Grinch put his money in? What bank does the Grinch put his money in? Snow bank. 
Uh, Might be the last of the Grinch shows. Last of the Grinch shows. Because the old goat will be back yep. the first of the year. Mm -hmm. Folks, thank you for joining us. We hope you had a good time tonight. Kind of get you away from maybe some of those old holiday movies you watch on TV. <laughs> uh, we hope y'all have a Merry Christmas, do. safe Christmas. Hey, we do. Each and every one of y'all, we thank y'all for being part of our family from the bottom of our heart. And we hope you have a blessed holiday season. Thank you.